Hi, Alan here. Um, today I want to talk to you guys about flakes. And different kinds of flakes that in the process of making a projectile point that you might create or that you might find if you're excavating an archaeological site and what these different flakes mean and what they tell you. So to start off really quick here, I'm just gonna strike a flake off of this little cobble. This is just a little river cobble of a mudstone out of the Santa Cruz River. I'm gonna strike it right here and hit a flake. And then I wanna to talk to you about that flake. So you can see I struck it right here and I struck this flake out of this cobble. This cobble has a rounded surface on it so you can tell it's a river cobble. It's been tumbled in a river. Um, and so this would be what we call a initial reduction flake. This flake was struck off of this little core here. One, it's one of the very first flakes struck off of it. It's right here. And so this is a, a initial reduction flake. And a flakes, all flakes have certain attributes. They have a, a flat spot. And this flat spot right here we call the platform. This is where I hit it and struck it in order to knock the flake off. Since a flake is a cone, so if you've ever seen a window that's been hit by a BB and you get a cone that pops out of it, that's what happened here. I took this cobble and I struck it with my sandstone hammerstone. I struck it right here. You can see the white mark that it left on it. When I hit it, I knocked a wave of energy into the rock. So it's like when you throw a rock in a pond and you see the wave of energy travel out. That's what happened here. I struck it, wave of energy traveled through the rock, creating the fracture that broke the flake off. Right behind where I struck it, there's this rounded bulbular area. This is half of that cone. Because I struck it off of an edge and not in the middle, because I struck it off the edge right here, only half of that cone could form. So the energy entered and basically spread out across the surface of the rock and travel down through the rock, creating that fracture. So this is the most basic element in flint napping. The entire process of going from a chunk of rock to a finished projectile point is the process of striking flakes and using different tools. So what I wanna do is just talk about right now the morphology of some of these kinds of flakes. So this is an initial reduction flake and I have a couple more here. This is a, a core. This is another cobble that, it, that I gathered out of the Santa Cruz River, and I have been striking flakes off of it with a bigger hammer stone, but I struck it right here, and I took off that flake right there. This is an initial reduction flake, um, and we call the earlier flakes cortical flakes that have a lot of the outer skin of the rock on them, like this flake right here, this flake right here. So you know you're in the early stages, and of, of the production process. And in a lot of cases, say if you're excavating a Hohokam site, a lot of the flakes you find are gonna be flakes like this. They just strike these flakes and then they use them as tools. You have lots of good cutting edge around all of these flakes. So these are early on. So as the process continues and say you're gonna make a projectile point or an arrowhead, you continue to make flakes, strike flakes off of these bigger flakes like these. So these are, these are initial reduction flakes and they're very easy to recognize in archeological sites. Another kind of flake that we see in archeological sites around here is called the bifacial thinning flake. These right here are some examples of bifacial thinning flakes. These are flakes that are struck off of bifaces when you're making like dart points or even little arrowheads. And so if you have a biface, what a biface means, it's a piece of rock that has been flaked on two faces. One, two. So it's got two faces. And so bifacial thinning flakes are when you're striking, when you hit flakes off of the edge, boom, you strike it with your tool here, bam, and you knock that flake that travels out across it. So bifacial thinning flakes are distinctive because they have they have the shape, they're sort of got of a slightly C curve shape to them. Um, uh, they look, they're reminiscent of like say a potato chip or something. So these are, these are nice little examples of little bifacial thinning flakes. These are great. When you make in a flake, when you're striking flakes, you want your flakes to 
travel across. They, they were from where you hit them right here, the platform, and you have a little bulb area and the energy spreads out across the biface. And where the energy runs out on the other side of the biface, you want it to end with a very sharp feathered edge, we call it. it it's sharp. You don't want it to end with a, a, some other kind of edges, which I'll show you in just a minute. So these are all good examples of bifacial thinning flakes right here that I've struck. And then you have other flakes, other things that you can do. So this is an initial reduction flake right here. This is struck off of, this is a piece of Jasper from Colorado. I struck it right here, bam, I hit it. And that flake traveled all the way across and it took out a part of the edge on the other side. This is a really great way to uh, split your, your piece of rock. And this is, there's a projectile point in this and there's a projectile point in this piece. So you can get a lot more out of your rock. This is what we call an overshot flake. This type of flake was real common with uh, Clovis cultural stuff. You see this, a lot of this being done in the early stages of their projectile point manufacture. So um, uh, I really like uh, striking these flakes. You can thin a piece down really fast. Um, and you can see how nice that just, that took the whole side of this rock off. And you can see how big in this one, how massive that bulb is. Sometimes you'll get a really big bulb. Sometimes you can barely see the bulbs when you strike them. So, uh, so that's another kind of flake right here. And then there's another type of flake that we get that is called a blade. This is a blade flake. This is actually a pressure blade flake and it was made off of this core right here. This is a core where using a pressure tool, you come in and you apply a lot of pressure. And basically it's the same thing as a little teeny pressure flake, which you do with the deer antlers, but it's on a very large scale. And when you do it on a core, a conical core like this, you push the flakes off in a circular pattern around it and you create a bunch of these little blades in uh, Mesoamerica, they were making these uh, um, even larger ones than this, and they were snapping them in sections and mounting them on the edges of uh, arrows and um, sometimes even clubs. They'd make them really big and they'd mount them to make swords. The Aztecs made swords with blade flakes. It's a really great way to get a lot of cutting edge out of your rock, um, especially if you don't have a lot of good rock around, you get a lot more cutting edge but you just have to take these and their components that you snap into straight sections and then you mount into other tools. Europe, there's tons of blade core technology in Europe and you see a little bit in Clovis culture stuff here. So these are really cool flakes and they're very rare around here. You don't see a lot of blade core stuff at all. It's pretty darn rare. Well, another aspect with this, I wanna talk about with this overshot flaking is that Sometimes it's really, really good, and sometimes it can be really, really bad when you strike an overshot flake and it doesn't go all the way across and it dives through in the middle, it breaks your piece in two and you don't get as much out of it. So it can be good and it can be bad. So you just have to be very careful when you're flaking, doing your overshot flaking. So then there's some kinds of flakes that are bad. The overshot can be bad, and then there's other ones that you can do that are really bad. This right here is a biface I was working on and I struck it here on this edge, but I didn't have my angle just right. So the energy entered it the rock and it traveled through it and it ran out of energy. And so it dove up through the surface and it created this little lip right here. So what we call this is a hinge flake. If you stick your flake back in here, you can kind of rock it back and forth. You can, you can see it's kind of like a hinge. So what happened is that energy entered the rock but there was not enough energy for it to travel across and it was at the wrong angle. So it traveled in, ran out of energy and then it dove up through the surface. So you end up with that hinge flake. That is bad. So every time I, if I come back along this edge and I want to hit another flake going this way, every flake's going to go up to this and it's going to end. It's going to stop and not travel any further across. So that is bad. I don't want that to happen. So I would have to come from this side now, strike flakes all the way across and clean this hinge off of here. Sometimes you can put your flake back in to where it came out of and you can re-hit that platform and you can get it to pop flake the rest of the way across. I think in this situation, I would come from the end and I would strike a flake from here up into here and clean most of that out of there that way.
So hinge flakes are bad. And then another, another kind of flake that's really bad is called a step fracture. So that's where you hit a flake. I struck it right here and I hit this flake and it went off and it snapped, it broke off like this. It left fracture. There's still a fracture going into the rock here and into the rock here. So there's remnant of the flake going in, but it ran out of energy and the top part of the flake broke off, creating a squared off edge. It's not rounded, it's squared off. And it, once again, if I were to come in from behind this and try to hit a flake in here, they're all gonna stop right here. So this is really bad. The only way to fix this is to come from another angle and strike a flake going this way, hit it on the edge right in here, strike a flake and drop a flake across and clean that off of there. So it's bad, you don't wanna do these. So well, that's a bad kind of flake. Another, another flake that you get that's kind of bad is if you're using too hard of a hammer stone and you're striking flakes off of a piece of rock and you hit it with too hard of a hammer stone, bam, what's gonna happen oftentimes is your flake is gonna split and you're gonna get a split flake. So this flake split right down the edge here and um, you can see the platform right here where I struck it, but you can see that it, it split. So you get half size flakes. Your flakes aren't very big and sometimes there's more fractures in them. So I like to use hammer stones that are a little bit softer that you don't get those split flakes in them like that. So that's kind of a bad flake. And then there's some really ugly kind of flake things you can get, which are broken flake fragments and angular debris. So sometimes the rocks that you're flaking, when you start to flake them, will have lots of fractures in them already or your flakes break up into a lot of little pieces with particularly brittle rock. And so angular debris has just got all kinds of just different weird edges and stuff. You can't look at it and say, well, there's a platform and there's a thing. It's hard to make sense out of it. It's, it's kind of junk, but it's a very common process. Certain kinds of rock you end up with a lot of angular debris in. And um, some pieces are like, it's almost as a flake, but it's just, you can't quite find a platform. It's just not really good enough. And so you end up with a lot of that. And then you get flake fragments where flakes break up. This is a piece of quartzite from Colorado. And you can see it's a flake, piece of a flake, but there's no bulb, there's no platform. It's just kind of midway in the flake somewhere. Sometimes they would break flakes up deliberately like this to use as tools. Um, and a lot of times it's just part of the process, it, it happens. And so clearly that's a flake fragment. This is a flake fragment of the same stuff right here. Just another little piece where it broke off. Um, so that's, that's, that's they're, they're really ugly, but that's another uh, type of flakes.